Hello, Value Investors. Thank you for joining me. Right now, I want to talk about Tiva and why I believe Tiva is undervalued. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe now so you can get my next value installment. Also, don't forget to check out my marketplace. Do a totally hassle-free, free trial on the marketplace. Find out which stocks I own and why. I offer balanced arguments for the stocks I own. So let's get started. Tifa is a very interesting investment. Did you know that since March lows, Tifa has rallied significantly? Well, you may contend that most stocks of value have rallied significantly, but Tifa has actually rallied close to 90%, close to a double since March lows. How many headlines have you seen about Tifa nearly doubling in the last three, four months? I've seen hardly any, and I've been watching. So it's just to show that sometimes you see, you see these these multiple multiple billion stock companies rallying, and they don't even make headlines. It's very very interesting, and that's why being a value investor is so attractive. Because if you can be a contrarian and buy when others are not willing to get involved, sometimes you can see some really positive returns. So let's move forward. Today I want to talk about the opioid scandal for Tiva. I want to talk about its debt profile. Also want to touch on its 2023 long-term financial targets. And lastly, I want to touch on its valuation. So here's the interesting thing. So how many people can say that Tiva's opioid scandal is an issue? Many would say so. But what is interesting is that the longer it takes for the opioid to scandal to get settled, the longer it takes for Tiva to start paying out any sums, and the better it can pay down its debt profile stack. So this is something that's very interesting. And I also think that we don't really know how much the opioid scandal can be. The most bearish analyst at the time was pointing towards four billion of cash outlay to settle all this, but it's difficult. This is so speculative. And for one thing, we know that Tiva's lawyers are probably some of the best lawyers in the world. They were able to go against Pfizer and to get a one-year exclusive generic treatment on Viagra. So Tiva's lawyers are very, very strong. And also, the longer it takes, the better it is for Tiva. Another thing that's quite interesting is I don't think right now in 2020, many investors are going to say that Tiva's over leveraged and that's the reason to stay away. That might have been the case and that might have been the argument in 2018. That would probably still be the argument in 2019. I cannot see that any investors would be primarily put off today because of Tiva's debt profile. That's not to say that it's not leveraged, it's significantly leveraged. In fact, we can see that right now it's just coming below five times multiple to EBITDA. This is still quite significant. And Tiva's CEO, Schlutz, said that he really would want to see Tiva's net debt come below three times over the next, over by 2023. So we're still some time away from that. But I don't think it's the case that Tiva is looking as leveraged as, let's say, Bosch Holdings, Bosch Health Holdings, because that one is really, really leveraged. It's approximately 6.8 to kind of around about that leverage. So it's not the same level of leverage. And Tiva is a leader in a sector. It's the biggest generic manufacturer in the world. So it has a very strong base, so it can sustain quite a lot of leverage. But at five times, it probably is too much. But it is, it is manageable and it is coming down. Moving on. Even during its darkest days, Tiva was saying that it would not dilute its shareholders and it stuck to its guns. It did not dilute its shareholders and it continued to pay down its debt. It has really, I think, very little debt coming up in 2020. It may have some in 2022, but I believe that its free cash flow profile will enable it to really pay down a significant portion of that. And we've seen now in the recent quarters how TV has been able to push back that debt, keeps pushing back its debt. So it's very well managed business. Another very attractive thing is 
Tiva's operating margins wants to get to 20, to 28% by 2023. Q1 2020 was a very strong quarter for Tiva and it did reach 28%. Now, we should remember that that was a particularly strong quarter, had a bit of a pull forward from Q2. So, it's not going to be sustainable at that level. And Tiva itself acknowledges that it's not going to be sustainable for 2020. But it shows that it is certainly possible for Tiva's operating margin to get up to 28%. So, if it is able to get that margin to op that operating margin to 28%, it doesn't need a lot of revenue growth for it to drive the share price higher. Next, I think that Tiva could still have about 40% upside potential. So I must caveat that I am a shareholder of Tiva, so I could sell out of Tiva at any point without giving you any notification. But I do think, objectively, that Tiva should not be trading for 13 billion market cap. Because if Tiva is able to reach that, those targets that it sets for itself for this year, 2020, of 2 billion, then that puts a stock trading for about 6 times free cash flow. There are not many sector leaders trading for 6 times free cash flow. That is really absurd. And I think that even if nothing else, really fundamentally surprises shareholders on the upside, just it being able to tick along, it shouldn't be pricing right now in this environment as six times free cash flow. One of the biggest investment risks that shareholders have to bear in mind is that Q1 was particularly strong. To even note itself, there was some pull forward from, fo from future quarters, so the rest of 2020 will not be particularly strong, and there is the potential for it to really miss estimates starting with Q2. But I urge investors not to play the quarterly game. Think long term. The best guidance that we have is that for Tiva's own guidance for 2020, where it says oh, it's going to make about 2 billion of free cash flow. So, with that in mind, the stock should not trade for 13 billion market cap. So, today we talked about the stock rallying significantly for Tiva. We talked about the opioid scandal, debt profile, how its long-term 2023 targets are very much achievable, and why at 13 billion markup, the stock is still possibly undervalued. It wouldn't take a lot for the stock to re-rate to a 10 times free cash flow multiple, particularly if it keeps paying down that debt, I think that, that is very, very possible. So as always, Come over to my marketplace, do a free trial, find out which stocks I own and why. I give you a balance argument for the stocks I own, and I try and find one new stock a month so that you can see if that works for you. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye!